Hi, welcome back to Rope Coaching's YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that it's not really discussed that much, but it's contact strength. We're gonna talk about what it is, how it can affect your climbing, and how to train it. Okay, so have you ever been climbing, hit a hold quite well, but then your hand opens up? Yeah, I think we all have. That's basically contact strength, rate of force development. So yes, it is important to have that force, that strength to your fingers, but it's also something that not many people, none of the videos on YouTube, for example, discusses. It also goes up the chain, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulders, being able to create that force to your tendons and muscles quickly throughout the body. We often see climbers hit a hole quite well and their shoulder collapse and they swing off and they can't hold it to their shoulder. That essentially is really important. We're gonna look at how to train these, but also up the chain as well. I tried kind of hard. <laughs> that was um, very fingery and shouldery. The climb. Uh, your turn. Okay, that's a perfect example of one having the strength and that full body, core, tension, fingers, having the power to make the moves. But also, if we look back at those those positions of Alex, she makes those moves and she cuts loose and she's got the ability to create the rate of force, um, the rate of force development very quickly. She's, she's hitting that hold and immediately being able to hold it. Now, I've had a go at this climb behind the scenes, thinking that maybe my hands would open, but some of the positions for me, I can't even hold statically, which is really important that you identify. Is it that you're not strong enough to hold the position in isolation? And it's worth trying. If you've got a project, pull on, if you can hold in isolation the position, you're strong enough. Then it's a matter of kind of learning the move. It could be knowing the hold, knowing where to grab the hold as you're gonna be going with speed. Um, but it could also be the fact that your hand hits it and opens, and that is contact strength. So this was a great example of Alex climbing and every hold she has to hit well, she has to hit, and she has to create that rate of force development and then obviously have the strength throughout it. So what we're gonna do now is look at a couple of climbs that maybe do force us or our hands to open, and then we're gonna look at how to train. There aren't many bits of training equipment or tools that highlight contact strength or the lack of better than a, a, a board, a training board. And probably the moon board is the most humbling. So we're, gonna, we're going to get on a climb that we've both done before. It's called Goliath. You can look it up, 70 plus V8. And the crux move really relies on immediate contact strength. Like we said earlier in this video, that is fingers, wrist, elbows, shoulders. So we'll have a go and see uh, how it goes. Oh. Okay, classic example. Okay, that was a bit of pain actually, like my flapper, but I've taped it. Um, so anyway, I hit the hold and my hand did uncurl. Classic example of contact strength. I'm gonna give it another go. Now, if you're trying a project or climbs and you see it recurrently, yes, we can work on contact strength. So we're gonna figure that out now and then we're gonna talk about how to train it. Okay, I went with speed, I hit it well, my hand just uncurled. So that's a classic example of contact strength. Now, we can work around that. I can learn the move a bit better. I could slow it down. I could perfect getting my hips closer. So there are other ways around it. But ultimately, if it keeps happening, we do have to train it. One thing that other people haven't mentioned as well is hold knowledge or IQ. Now, this applies for obviously indoors and uh, competition climbers specifically. 
when if you can recognize a hold, you know the sweet spot. So when you go to a hold, you know the best place to grab it. And that's really important because you could have all the strength and contact strength you need, but if you hit the hold poorly, it's not gonna help you. So that is a point we have to make. But now, let's look at tools like the canvas board and how to train contact strength. Okay, training time. We're gonna look at tips. Like we said, it's really important to look at up the chain. So the first exercise that we recommend for everybody is a simple bar exercise and we can make it more advanced. Step one is just to stand underneath the bar and just you're gonna hover your fingers above the bar and then grab it, take your feet off. So you're gonna essentially shock load everything. So you want your shoulders engaged, they shouldn't be collapsed, nothing should be kind of loose. Maybe a slight bend in the elbows is good. I'll show you now. Super simple, three reps, five sets. Now, if you want to advance that, we can jump into it. Again, in anticipation, I'm gonna lock up a little bit to become slightly more defensive to protect the shoulders, elbows, and wrists. The beauty of that is you can change the width, the angle of your elbows, the distance you're going from. Super simple exercise that prepares kind of the joints up the body in preparation for what we're gonna do now, which is focus on the fingers. So Robin just showed you the first step on a bar, and that's more to do with like the shoulders and the elbows, so it's like up the chain. Now we're gonna to come to the hangboard and we're gonna focus more on the grip strength, the, the fingers. So we're gonna do a very similar thing, what we just did on the bar, but except isolating the fingers, and I'm gonna do why you want a straighter arm. This, the box I'm on is very awkward length right now, or height. So I'm gonna catch it really quickly, and you can do different grip types. So the first time I'm gonna do it is open hand. So that was the open hand grip. Now we're gonna do the half crimp grip position. Uh, make sure all fingers, especially the front three, are 90 degree bend. This is my favorite grip type for power and strength, especially when you're board climbing. Um, so do the same exact thing as I did before, but also make sure you're warmed up very well before doing this. We would never do this cold because you want to make sure you don't get an injury. Perfect. Next up, we're going to look at using equipment. So. You can either use this with like a travel hangboard, this is the tension block, or you can use just, you know, whatever device you have, and you can use weights as well. The beauty of this, or for example, this tin deck progressor, which tells us the data, is it's measurable. So if you're lifting up weights and plates, you can work out if you're getting stronger, if your contact strength's improving, if your hands are opening, or if you're staying in a certain grip. We're gonna use today the tension block and the tin deck progressor, because it will tell us exactly what um, force we're producing, but also it's got a specific mode for the rate of force development, RFD. So I'm gonna film Alex have a go. It, it's all set up, we can talk you through it, but essentially you go onto the, the app, you connect this to your, your phone, you click on RFD and you can choose le left hand, right hand or both, and it will give you a countdown. And then essentially you're gonna pull, it says three, two, one, pull as hard as you can. And it measures between 20 and 80% of your max strength. Now, it gets rid of the first bit because they say there's a delay and it's purely your neurological response. From there, it's strength, muscles and tendons. So we're gonna see Alex have a go now. Okay, so Alex is about to do her RFD session. New session, does right hand and left hand. And then she's gonna switch sides. Gives her a 10 second countdown. We'll share the screen just so you get to see this too. And it'll do a 10 second countdown to switch eyes, then a three, two, one. And you can see from that, and we'll replay it, that Alex stayed in a really strict half crimp. Now, again, you can train different grip types, but we'll share her data on the screen right now. Okay, so I'll share this screen, Alex's RFD testing. But there's a delay in her right hand, that's just literally a time delay. But you can see, for example, it measuring between that 20% and 80% of max. 
And it's a really easy way of training. As long as you're monitoring the grip and you're listening to your body, you don't feel injured, like Alex said, you've warmed up, you can measure this. You could do it every other session or the first session on and make sure that you can see your contact strength improving in time and in force. Okay, the campus board is synonymous with power and contact strength. So if your campus board is a good one, you'll have varying grips, so obviously for different kind of abilities. If you're new to a campus board, you could go on these juggy ones. Obviously, if you're more advanced, you can go down the rung sizes. The beauty of this training board, the campus board, is that you could do the same exercise that we did on the hangboard, just hover and pulls. You could do jump and catches like we did on the bar, but also we can do a different exercise. So I'll show you now. The beauty of that is it's all measurable, it's all controllable. I could jump between rung two and three, or two and four, and two and five. I can also really monitor the grip type, so I was really trying to make sure I caught the uh, edge in a half crimp. You could catch in a front three, you could catch with four fingers open, completely up to you, very controllable. There's a next advancement to that exercise, but I'm also gonna talk about it in more of a climbing specific aspect too. As the board. Earlier on, we tried that Goliath climb, so it makes sense to try and build the contact strength on that specific hold. Very similar exercise that we just did, but I'll show you on the moon now. So I could just use anything with my left hand. I'm gonna jump to that same white hand and try and catch in a half crimp, and I'll do the same again. Obviously, you could use it as a proper systems board and just switch side and do it the same with your left hand but it's a really easy way of training specific contact strength for your project. That could be on rock, it could be indoors. The next part of this exercise looks at developing that rate of force development. Right now I'm catching it, which is great, but now I want to create some force to it too, so it's more advanced campusing. Cool. Okay, so the next bit is just an actual campus exercise. If you want a more detailed video, about how to campus, the exercises, the nuances, check out the link in the description below. We did a really detailed one. But for now, like I said, I'm gonna actually just campus now, so I'm gonna try and do like a one, four, seven. So matching hands on rung one, right hand to rung four, and then explode to rung seven and match. The key difference here is now I'm catching, but I also have to generate the force through the fingers. I'm just gonna use three, six, nine, just because it's easier for me, for my height. Again, the beauty of a campus board is it's completely controllable. If you're new to it, you could literally just go one, two, three, basic ladder. You can also do doubles, it's more aggressive, much more shock loading through the fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, like we talked about, but you'll see it's quite popular. You can do different coordination exercises too. And that's the same on the campus board. You can do it on the normal climbing board, a normal gym, and it's really controllable. It's an excellent tool for contact strength, high quality. Obviously the best way of getting contact strength, sports specifically, is climbing. Now we've seen Alex climb this video, we've seen me try to climb in this video. It's the best way. Yes, we can control those factors in tra using training tools like the campus board, hang boards, etc. But if you really want to develop sports specific contact strength, you want to go and climb, whether that's outside, inside, bouldering, sport, make it sure it's explosive, dynamic. But just keep an eye. If your fingers are opening, you're hitting holds well and they're opening, it's probably a sign that you need to train some contact strength. Now, a big thanks to Movement Gyms. We're at their Baker uh, location in Denver. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Please click like and subscribe for more content. We really appreciate it.